everyone. Welcome to Danny Chats. This is episode number five. Uh, today I am joined by Rob. Uh, Rob, you're from California, is that right? Yes, I'm in Berkeley, California. Nice, nice. I think, uh, weirdly, I, I think I lived there for like a year when I was younger, but I was so young, I was like three years old, I don't really remember it. Um, oh, wow. there's, there's just some random pictures I've seen of me out there. And uh, oh. yeah, my parents sort of mentioned it before. Um, so let's go into you. You were diagnosed with Wilson's disease when you were young, is that right? I was 12. Yeah. And do you remember much of that? I remember the. Um, it's hard to understand how long, like my my the trajectory of my getting sicker and sicker. Pro, you know, what was the duration of that period of time from when I kind of was like, hmm, things aren't going so great. Something's wrong. Yeah. My parents finally paying attention to it. Um, uh, I think the final straw for my parents was um, I was sweat. I was filling with water. Yeah, that's very common. Um, yeah. Um, and my liver was taking a had taken a beating, and I think was on its way out. Um, and uh, this was 1978. Yeah. Um, in Rhode Island, at the time. Um, and I I guess I was in the hospital for about two weeks or so. Okay. Yeah. Until they figured out what was wrong with me. I see. So you were in the hospital having tests and everything for two weeks. Yeah. 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 And um, I've actually recently gotten the medical record from the admission. And uh, because I'm participating in that study at Yale. Yeah, you mentioned that. We can talk about that shortly. That'd yeah. Be great. And so it was fascinating for me to read through the admission notes and all the test results and everything until they finally, you know, there was um, there was a uh, there was a young uh, doctor from India who was visiting, I guess, who had seen it before, yeah, and who suggested that that could be it, and then. Boom. Yeah. That's it. There's a touch of luck, which kind of like my diagnosis, really. Just one person in the right place at the right time. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think they were for a long time operating under the theory that I had some kind of leukemia. Okay. Yeah. For a while. Um, and I, I don't remember, but I don't know. I mean, so then, you know, they, they figured it out. They, Right in the chart, I mean, right in the medical record, it says they put, put me on penicillamine and they immediately started to notice that I was peeing out tons of copper. Really? Because it's, it's not, I've not many, or spoke to many people from America that have been on penicillamine. Um, UK, it seems quite common. Uh, but yeah, that's quite good that they put you on that. And obviously it started to work straight away. Yeah, I've had an exceedingly normal life. Um... Uh, you know, except for the constant drama chasing the drugs. Yeah. But yeah, that's very different out in America to what it is here. Um, Such, don't even, I'm going to start swearing like a drunken sailor on Friday night if we start yeah. talking about the pharmaceuticals out here. Yeah, uh, I, I did have a really long chat with someone after we recorded a video about the American system. And uh, we're actually going to do a whole video on it because it is so different to the UK. And I don't think people realize um, people in the UK, are so, not everyone, but there's a few people that say they wouldn't mind a private healthcare system, but I don't think they understand what's... No. Yeah. No. I mean, I, if I don't have my job, how am I going to pay for $27,000 a month in, 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 in pills? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which, which is, which is what the out-of-pocket costs are on those pills. Yeah, that's crazy. That's it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Easy. And it's not like you can do without them either, is it? 
And it's not like you can do without them either. No, no, exactly. I have a whole lot of things to say, a whole bunch of swears. <laughs> I'm sure you're not the only one on that. No, um, it's terrible. Yeah. So what's this study that you're involved in with Yale? Yeah, so um, there's, a, there's a longitudinal study of Wilson disease patients. Um, really, it's just um, watching progression. Okay. Because nobody's ever nobody's ever really paid attention to the population before. Yeah. You know, um, how does the how does the illness progress? What are the what are the what are the challenges that we all face? Um, how do we how do we all react to the to the different meds? I mean, nobody's ever looked at. I think they have. I think they've got a couple of hundred people enrolled in the study now yeah. who they're tracking. Uh, you know, just to see how our our lives progress. Um, when I went in the, I went around Christmas last year. It was like December eighteenth, I think, was my visit, and I went and I I visited with neurology, psychology, and then the specialist, Dr. Shulsky, in I guess he's a hepatologist. Yeah. Um, and it was at the Yale Transplant Clinic, um, the liver transplant clinic. And um, I just, I had all these exams, filled out all these questionnaires. They took a ton of blood and, and um, it's all covered by the study. And, you know, they're just, you're going to go, I'm going to go every year and they're going to track my progress every year. Yeah, yeah. That, that must be interesting. But the, the thing with Wilson's is it varies so much from person to person, doesn't it? So uh you know they're, they're gonna have to track a lot of people to try and work out if there is sort of any kind of trend or yeah yeah one thing i have learned over the years is um how fortunate i am um because i've really had a fairly exceedingly normal life yeah you mentioned to me you're very strict on your diet or you try to be strict on your diet uh, of you know low copper um, yeah. low copper foods yeah i um my my liver functions have been going up slowly over yeah. time and my doctor here in california she doesn't she's never seen anybody with wilson disease before oh I'll bet so, so she didn't know what to do and she was talking to other um hepatologists because she that's what she is she's a liver doctor yeah in the area and getting advice about what to do and how important was it that my liver functions were slowly going up and um that lack of a real um sense of believing that my doctor knew what the hell was going on <laughs> was what led me to contact the people at Yale. I went to Yale and of course they basically told me that what was going on in California was completely wrong and that I should be treated in a completely different way. Okay. She had been reducing the amount of penicillamine that I was taking. Yeah. Yeah, I was quite interested when you said to me about the uh, you were trying to or that they were trying to get you off of penicillamine and uh, onto just the um, zinc. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I've never spoke to anyone that's actually done that, but I could see how that could possibly work. Like you say, if your liver functions are constantly going, you know, getting better and you're 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 eating the, the correct diet, you're avoiding the food then I could see how that would happen. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's also um, partially my interest to try to disassociate myself from this ridiculously stupid overpriced medication. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I could afford like two months worth and then I'd have no money left in the world. Yeah, yeah. Have health insurance that paid for it. Yeah, I and, totally understand that. 
you know, so I would rather be taking zinc, which is $20 a month, if I could get to that point. So that's kind of the path we're on right now. But uh, they, you said that the, the Yale people said that that wasn't the right path, or? No, no, no. So it was Yale. So, so my doctor here in California, so with Wilson disease, the thing that I um, have come to learn is that your blood copper, the, the amount of blood in your copper is one of the things that they track. Yeah. Another more important thing to track is how much we're urinating out. Yeah. And I was not urine... Because they had decreased, my, in California, uh, my doctor had decreased my penicillamine I wasn't you I wasn't putting enough out. Yeah, yeah. Building up in my body yeah. because I was trying to get my blood copper to be higher. My blood copper is really low. Okay. So she was reducing the amount of meds thinking that I didn't have enough copper. Yeah, okay. And as soon as I got to Yale, they were like, "No. Oh my god, absolutely the wrong way to be going. Blood copper is totally secondary to urine copper." Okay. And so as soon as they, they like quadrupled the amount of penicillin that I was taking. I was taking, I was taking 250 milligrams a day. And now I'm taking a thousand milligrams a day again, which was what I took my whole life until the last couple of years. It, she started to decrease it in the last couple of years. Yeah, I think I was on uh, either 250 twice a day or 500 twice a day. I think it was 250 twice a day. Yeah, that seems to be a pretty standard dose. Yeah. Um, and so as soon as the folks at Yale saw that I was doing 250 milligrams a day, he was like, whoa, no, start increasing immediately. Yeah. And so I did that. And um, so the hope is now, and, and I'm peeing on a ton of copper. Um, I haven't had a um a 24-hour urine in about four or five months i'm due for one but i've honestly been staying away from the medical center yeah i can understand at the moment you no know, so um i've got to contact her and go in and have that done but the hope is that as soon as my the penicillin helps me to chelate again that i can try going on zinc for a while and see what happens yeah so really it was um it was the the folks at Yale in conjunction with my doctor here helping to craft this plan um you know we'll see how it goes there's the, oh there's no guarantee I've taken penicillin my whole life yeah if I have to take it my whole life I will I mean I have a friend in India who sent me a box of a year's worth of penicillin for two hundred dollars American yeah yeah uh <laughs> It's okay if you, I suppose, if you trust you, the person that you're getting the, the drugs from, because, yeah. but yeah. that must lead people to in all, like, so, uh, lead them to circumstances where they might be buying something that's, that's dodgy. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I have, um, I have a friend in Pennsylvania who he can't get the pills. Yeah. His, his insurance refuses to pay for them. So they're, letting, so they're letting him go into liver failure and they're going to transplant him when it happens. He just came out of the hospital again after having had a horrible bout with his liver. And they're just waiting for him to fail and then they're going to transplant him because it costs less to transplant than buy the drugs. Yeah, that's, that's, in, that's incredible. Uh, it is ridiculous. You can bleep that out if you want, but it is the most awful story. I mean, I've been sending him... I've been taking a few of my, every so often. I had some old, I had some older penicillin, and I sent it to him, you yeah. know, and he, and he's been using it to try to prolong. It's American healthcare is it's it's a, it, it's a disaster. Yeah. It's a disaster. Anybody who thinks the uh, the the National Institute of Health is worse need, should come over here and live here for a while. Yeah, yeah, we're we're very blessed to have the NHS. Very blessed. Yeah incredibly blessed incredibly blessed i have i have a friend um from high school who lives there she married a british guy 
nicest, nicest guy ever. They were living there. And then he got cancer and died horribly in like a year. Yeah. And the NIH treated it. She didn't pay a penny. She, it was a miracle because here in the United States, when this happens to people, they're ruined. Yeah, you, you have to sell your house and everything, I suppose. Yeah, I, I have very little good left to say about this country. Yeah. Yeah, mad. It's mad. It's yeah. mad. But fortunately, I have a job. I still have a job. I work in healthcare, actually. Probably my motivation to go into healthcare was probably driven by how much time I spent in and out of the hospital as a kid. Weirdly, you say that. I know so many people that have spent a long time when they were a child in hospital and they've gone on to do nursing, uh, doctors. Yeah. You know, it, it is, it is funny how many people gravitate towards that afterwards. Yeah. Um, I feel like the hospital, all, the, all of our staff are like a uh, second family, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, you spend so much time around them. And yet, the, it takes a special kind of person to do it, I think. That is the truth. Yeah. That is the truth, so. So, uh, with your Wilsons and everything, um, was it something that you had to talk to your partner about, or was it just he saw you taking meds and you said, this is what it is, or, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I... For a very long, I mean, we've been together for 20 years, um, yeah. and for a long time, I didn't even, I didn't think about it. I, I took the pills every day. I did whatever I wanted. I pretty much ate whatever I wanted as long as I, I didn't eat any organ meat. I didn't eat any oysters. Yeah. Like, I stayed away from the top five, but I ate cheap chocolate. I ate M&Ms as much as I wanted. Yeah, you know, I, I ate cheap chocolate because it's the dark chocolate that's got a lot of copper in it. Yeah. Now I don't even eat cheap chocolate anymore. Hardly um, breaks my heart. Yeah, uh, okay. you know, um, and you know, it was such a non it was such a non issue for me until the last. I think it was probably about three years ago that I. Um, that my that my liver functions started to get a little weird, and around the same time, I actually opened. I used to get the, I used to get the when I would fill my medication, it would come in the mail, and I would get a receipt. And I I didn't look at the receipt. I just threw it away. Yeah. Didn't look at. It. And then one day I looked at it and I was like, fifty seven thousand dollars. And I was like, what the. What is that? And so this led to my whole exploring what had happened to the cost of the medication and then my having a conversation with my own doctor about it and talking to one of the, the VPs at the healthcare company that I work for yeah. about why are we paying this price for these drugs that have been around since 1955? Um, have you seen the documentary on YouTube about Wilson disease? Uh, not on YouTube. I've probably seen the documentary, but I know there's a, on Netflix, there's a series called, I think it's called Rotten. Uh, one of those episodes is about the American drug system. Um, and Wilson's disease gets mentioned in it. And one of the oh, medications okay. gets mentioned. Yeah. And like okay. how the prices have just been hiked. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that one guy, Martin Shkreli. Yeah, I've heard of him. I've heard of him. Responsible for the fucking suffering of so many people in this country. If I could, I would. Yeah, I would so have I, I have, from what I heard of him, he bought a uh, cancer uh, cancer um, drug company. I and I presume they must be doing your drugs as well, or the penicillin and other things. So horrible. All this country thinks about is money. It's disgusting. Yeah. People are disgusting. Yeah. Oh my God, don't get me started, please. But I wouldn't give for a little bit of European socialism. Yeah. Um, so anyway, there is a, an amazing YouTube, um, like the history of Wilson disease. And it talks about the guy who first created penicillin in his bathtub in the UK. Yeah, it was his 100th birthday the other day. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lady that uh, I wrote, uh, sort of we spoke to through social media, she put a book together and um, 
she asked a few people to sort of write a few words, and I sent a few words into it as well. There was supposed to be a big meeting for his birthday, but it's been cancelled with what, everything that was going on. Is, yeah. is, he, is he alive? Yeah, 100. No way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, his 100th birthday. Wow, that's incredible. So it wasn't just like an immemorial celebration. No. It was, no. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. When I was a kid, I used to think that all the copper in my body gave me some superhero powers or something. <laughs> you yeah, know. Uh, weirdly, uh, copper's worth quite a bit of money over here as scrap metal and stuff. And people used to say to me all the time, <laughs> can't you just peer it out? you got to be worth a fortune. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't yeah. quite work that way, does it? No, no, it's not really that much copper, actually, in the scheme yeah. of things. No. So, uh, but no, yeah. No. But you should check out the video on YouTube. It was really, it was really good. Um, it was really informative. And there's actually um, a couple of great videos about the study at Yale on YouTube as well. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll, um, what I'll try and do is I'll find them and then I'll try to add them to the, uh, if anyone wants to have a look, I'll try and add a link to the videos below this. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, good. So, um, I, uh, like I said before, I, you know, you, you know, you asked me about how much my, my partner has been involved in this. And really, like I said, it was really, it was not an issue for me or anybody else. I mean, I, my life was completely normal um, until we discovered that I, you know, that I've been filled with copper again because they had reduced my drugs. Yeah. So they, so the folks at Yale told me I should go on the low copper diet again. And... I was pretty much um, a vegetarian for about eight years. I mean, I ate meat once in a great while, but I got all my protein from, guess what? Beans and nuts. Yeah. And nuts, what else? Nuts are high in copper, though, aren't they? That's the thing. Nuts are high in copper, and so are beans. Yeah. And so, like, I used to eat pretty much... I used to eat beans and nuts every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and I had to radi radically change my diet. And the month of January this year, I mean, was awful. I had such a hard time figuring out what to eat. I kept looking at the lists of, like, the recommended menus. And yeah. I was like, oh, my God, I can't, I cannot eat, like, grapefruit and egg white for breakfast. Thank yeah. you. You know, um, so that has been a big adjustment for him because uh, our cooking radically changed. Yeah, I can imagine that actually. Now you say that because obviously, when you cook in any relationship, is you cook for two people, don't you? So, yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have more frozen pizza. I've eaten more frozen pizza in the last five months than <laughs> than in the last fifty years. So. Pizza's what? not a bad choice. What? Pizza's not a bad choice anyway. I like pizza. No, no, pizza's great. Now I have an excuse to just be a slob and eat pizza all the time. So, yeah. all good, I guess. Well, um, thank you very much, Rob. It's been very yeah. interesting. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you for coming on. And I wish you all the best for the future. We'll stay in touch. Yeah, for sure. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.